First, uh, let me welcome everybody here today. I appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, last year, obviously, we had an abbreviated because of COVID, but I am amazed at the turn up today, and I greatly appreciate it. Before we begin, I would like to remind everybody, if you have your cell phones, please move them to silent. I would hate for you to be the one that your cell phone goes off in the middle of the ceremony. Um, I guess we'll get started. Uh, we're going to begin with the uh, posting of the colors, and welcome back is Marion Correction Institute, who has been away for a couple of years, but they're back to post the colors. Uh, so if you'd all please rise. Detail. Okay. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Remain standing and we'll have the invocation by Marion County Sheriff's Office Chaplain Dale Baker. A moment of silence for our fallen brothers and sisters. Father in heaven, we just thank you for today, for everybody that came out to pay honor to the, those that have fallen, lost in the line of duty in this county, and for those who have lost in the line of duty everywhere. Well, we know that so far in this year, we've lost 107 officers. Different circumstances, but lost in the line of duty nevertheless. We ask you to show favor on their families, bless them, allow them to deal with the situations that they have to deal with because they've lost their loved one. I ask you to be with all of our officers today, those here and those that are still out on patrol protecting us. Show favor on them, keep them safe. And Lord, just be with the speaker today as he brings the message. And Lord, just keep everybody here open to what it really means to have law enforcement in this country when so many places in this country try to get rid of it. But Lord, we claim in this instance, in this city, in this state, 
that law enforcement has seen and given the respect that it deserves and needs. We give this to you through your son Jesus and all God's people said, amen. Please be seated. All right. My name is Jim Fitzko. I'm a lieutenant with the Marion Police Department. I am also president of the Steve Young Memorial Lodge, Marion County Fraternal Order of Police. I would like to thank the families of our fallen officers who have gathered here today. I would also like to thank the officers and their families for joining me and honoring those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Finally, I would like to thank the elected officials and private citizens who have taken time out of their busy schedules to pay respects to the heroes we honor today. I am grateful to work in a community that supports law enforcement officers. Trust me, that does not happen everywhere. It is my honor to be here today to honor our fallen heroes, five men who made the ultimate sacrifice to keep our community safe. It has been a deadly year for law enforcement officers across America. In 2021, 614 men and women were added to the roll call of heroes. 10 were Ohioans. The largest killer of cops in the last year was the deadly COVID-19 virus, which claimed 436 law enforcement officers in 2021. Continuing the trend started in 2011, officers killed feloniously has outnumbered those killed in vehicle crashes. Officers killed by ambush is up 152% since 1990. Officers are being targeted solely for the solely because of the uniform they wear and killed before even taking action. We must all pray that these numbers reverse themselves and we get a year where no law enforcement officers are added to the memorials across the country, including our memorial here in Marion County. In Marion County, law enforcement officers and the community have a special relationship. Our community relies on its deputies, officers, and troopers to help keep Marion safe. And these men and women do an outstanding job in driving down the crime numbers and arresting perpetrators of crime in our community. We work together, hand in hand, to keep Marion as safe as possible. And our officers do it day after day, night after night, every single day of the year. They pin on their badge and their gun and walk out the door to risk their lives to keep Marion safe. They place themselves at risk to protect each and every one in this county in an era where it has never been tougher to be a cop. You see, violence against officers has been on the rise for several years. Officers are more heavily scrutinized and questioned today, more than we have ever been before. We are required to do more with less. We are often asked to be all things to all people, marriage counselors, mental health professionals, legal advisors, and sometimes boxing referees. Even in the middle of a worldwide pandemic that has caused over a million deaths in America, we still come to work and protect and serve our community. And these men and women do an outstanding job despite all of the challenges. But this kind of strain has led to many leaving this profession or not entering in the first place. All over America, law enforcement agencies are struggling to recruit new officers to join the ranks of men and women standing to my right. This crisis forces unwelcome overtime and more dangerous scenarios of being outnumbered. Yet, those who have been called into law enforcement keep coming to work when they know they will be shorthanded. They keep coming to work when they know the dangers are increasing. They keep coming to work knowing 20, over 25,000 law enforcement officers have been killed in the line of duty since the founding of this great nation. 
They keep coming to work even while knowing that every year over 60,000, over 60,000 law enforcement officers are assaulted on the job every year. They keep coming to work because they are committed to protecting and serving this community. They know their work is noble. They know we are all counting on them and they will not let us down. My coworkers know this, community supports them, and they know that they have earned that support by doing the right thing day in, day out, over decades. I am serious when I say this, the men and women of law enforcement are truly heroes. I am proud to be amongst them every day. They face the possibility of violence, injury, or death every single shift and keep coming to work to protect my family and yours. To me, that is a big part of the definition of a hero. I want to conclude my remarks by continuing to pledge my unwavering support to these heroes from the Fraternal Order of Police. We will always have your back. To the families of our fallen colleagues, please know that your law enforcement family is here for you. We will never forget the sacrifice your loved ones made while protecting and serving our community. Thank you for allowing us to honor and recognizing your loved ones here in our memorial. It means the world to us that you are here today. I also want to thank and pay my respect to those that laid the groundwork and set the standard in our profession, those officers that have retired. Thank you. You are important to the FOP and you are important to this community. Lastly, I want to thank all of you for your time spent with us today honoring our brothers and sisters. While we are thankful for their sacrifice and service, we are hopeful and pray that not another name, that another name does not ever get added to the roll call of heroes. May God bless you and your families. Thank you. Where's my thing? Now I'm going to introduce our keynote speaker, and as normal, I messed up this year. I forgot to get a nice long bio for him. So, without a nice long bio, I won't go any further and just introduce our keynote speaker, Marion Common Pleas Judge, the Honorable Matt Frericks. Good afternoon, I'll try to speak up uh, so you can hear me over the traffic and the rain and, and everything else going on here. Uh, my name is Matt Frericks. I'm the judge in the general division of the Court of Common Pleas. I want to thank President uh, Fitzko and the members of the Fraternal Order of Police for inviting me here to speak with you today. It's truly an honor. Um, I'll give a little brief bio. Uh, for those who don't know me, I was appointed to the Common Pleas bench in November of 2021. Uh, previously, I was a magistrate for Judge Ballinger and uh, an assistant prosecutor for both uh, Brent Yeager and, and Ray Grogan. Uh, during my time as prosecutor, I got to know many of the uh, law enforcement officers in the community, was able to work with many of you on, on cases and in seeking justice. I also learned so much that I didn't know about the job that you do, the dangers, the risks, and difficulties that, that come with it that I didn't appreciate. So I developed a newfound respect and appreciation of your work. As a magistrate, now as judge, while I don't get to work hand in hand on cases with law enforcement, I do have the opportunity to hear and decide uh, cases that you work so hard on to uh, help keep our community safe. And I'm so glad I was able to serve as an assistant prosecutor and get that perspective because it helps me so much every day on the bench. As we come together to reflect and honor those members of the law enforcement community who have given the ultimate sacrifice, I'm overcome with a sense of gratitude to all those who serve this community. The past few years have presented some unique challenges from dealing with the pandemic to the challenges that law enforcement faces in the age of technology and social media that we live in. What never fails to impress me, and uh, President Fitzko uh, alluded to this, is that uh, whatever, whatever challenges you face, no matter what is thrown at you, you always show up. Your dedication to our community to protect and serve our citizens never fails. And I think that speaks to the teamwork that it takes to, um, to work together in a cohesive a unit. 
And I see that every day from, from our officers. I'm a big uh, Notre Dame football fan and um, got a quote from one of our legendary coaches, Lou Holtz, about teamwork. He said that teamwork is the foundation of success. The three universal questions that an individual asks of his teammate or employee or employer are, one, can I trust you? Two, are you committed to excellence? And three, do you care about me? And I see all three of those in our law enforcement agencies working together as a team every single day. As we remember the law enforcement officers who have died, specifically today we honor Jerome Hostetter, Edward Masterson, William Bender, William Randy Bender, and Brandy Winfield. There are no words that can compensate for this great loss. There is no measure for the grief felt by the surviving families. As we reflect today, the emotions of sadness felt by the surviving families and friends are difficult to process. I know many of you and your families personally, and I know how tight-knit the law enforcement community is. And I know that you can all draw strength from one another. It is understandable to question the price paid by those fallen heroes. But it is my hope that today we recognize, remember, and never take for granted the things we get to enjoy every day because of the sacrifice of those fallen heroes because of those law enforcement officers who bravely served in devotion to the good and safety of the public, who served to make our community a great place to live and to raise our children safely. And while the emotions of sadness and grief remain, the feeling of gratitude and of respect must also shine through. Gratitude and respect for the courage, devotion to the public service, and ultimately the sacrifice. In my role as judge, I see uh, the members of our law enforcement community serving every day. And many times in court, the actions of officers are scrutinized and examined with the benefit of hindsight. And what I see is so many instances of our law enforcement officers not just fighting crime, but also helping those in need, sometimes arriving first on scene to a drug overdose or a violent offense, sometimes arriving to calm down an unruly crowd. What I also see is so many instances of our law enforcement community going above and beyond the minimum duties of the job, doing things that build relationships in our community and in our schools. And in doing those things, you're all strengthening the fabric of our com community, not only the faith in, that the community has in law enforcement, but also the faith that our community has in the entire justice system and doing so professionally. In life, I believe it's so important for each and every one of us in this society and in this community to come from a place of gratitude. And on this day where we gather to recognize and honor the sacrifice made, I want to say thank you to all those who serve and especially those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Again, thank you for the opportunity to say a few words and God bless. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, with him pointing out that he's a Notre Dame fan, it's going to be a rough year for them starting out with a loss, but <laughs> I couldn't let it go. I apologize. Uh, we'll now have a laying of the wreath, followed by the roll call of heroes, and then um, the honor guard salute and the playing of taps. During the honor guard salute, there will be gunfire, just so everybody's aware of that and they're prepared for that. We'll now do the laying of the wreath.
Jerome Hostetter, Marion City Police, in the watch 1910. Edward Masterson, Marion City Police, in the watch 1922. William Bender, Marion County Sheriff's Office, in the watch 1973. William Randy Bender, Trooper, Ohio State Highway Patrol, and the watch, 1982. Randy Winfield, Marion County Sheriff's Office, and the watch, 2004. That was presented by uh, Major Atkins from Marion City Police Department. We will now have the Honor Guard salute and playing of taps. Before we do the benediction, I just want, I wanted to add this in the beginning, but I forgot. Uh, this is our 20th year. Uh, we got the land donated by the Marion Cemetery in 2001. The memorial was in place in 2002. I've been here for every one, and I continue to keep doing this to honor our fallen. Uh, we'll now have the uh, benediction by Pastor Dale Baker. Father, we again thank you for bringing us together to pay tribute to our fallen heroes. Ask you to again be with all the officers out today. Keep them safe and keep everyone here. As they leave this place, keep them safe till they get to their homes and back to work. We just ask you to show favor on all the departments in the city, county, and state, and just keep everybody focused on doing what they need to do and allowing the public to look on them with the gratitude and appreciation that they should. And we just give this to you through your son, Jesus. Amen. If I can have everybody rise for the retrieval of colors, please. To make this happen, require you be seated. I'm sorry. 
To make this happen requires a lot from a lot of people. Uh, I need to thank the Marion Cemetery. They maintain the grounds for us and it looks nice every year. If you'll notice, we finally have lights after 20 years. Uh, if you get a chance to drive by at night, it looks wonderful. Uh, the Marion's Veteran Council has been with us, I think all 20 years, to provide us with a rifle squad and the playing of taps. Harding High School does our sound. They're here, they've been here numerous years. Uh, couldn't do it without them. Uh, most importantly, I want to thank the families of the fallen for being here. Uh, that concludes our ceremony. Thank you for coming. Fall out.